day that the Lord has made, and we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. I want to welcome you to the morning edition of Pastor Troy Wynn Sr. Live. I got to tell you guys, I am a little bit exhausted from yesterday's activities, but I am still blessed, still excited, and still honored and privileged, man, to be able to do what I do in this world in the name of the kingdom of God. Shining light, spreading love, inspiring, motivating people, demonstrating what God can do in our lives, giving people the formula, the blueprint, and then really demonstrating in a real way for people to see what happens when you put God first, what happens when you live for God, for real, for real, <laughs> and when God becomes your all, your everything. We're talking about a relationship that supersedes religion. And we're really talking about a commitment that extends beyond convenience. God is searching this earth for sons and daughters who he can really use as his advertisement on this planet. And I don't know about you, but I want to be God's advertisement. I want to be God's billboard. I want to prove to the devil <laughs> that everything he thought he did to destroy me, uh, it actually has empowered me, strengthened me, and really helped me realize how good God is and how big of a fool I was when I didn't obey God and how big of a fool I was when I didn't adhere to his word and I didn't do what he told me to do. So, hey, to you, devil, <laughs> look at us now. God is amazing. And I just want to encourage you today, if you have been blessed to see this day, number one, live this day for God. Have a God day. That's how I'm going to end this broadcast with this statement, have a God day. Because a God day is a good day. A God day is a day where you put God first and everything about you reflects God. It exudes God. You are a walking reminder that God exists, God is good, and that God's got people on this planet that don't live for themselves, but they live for the kingdom. Be that person and watch God invest in you. Be that person and watch God shower you with evidence and shower you with proof, because that's what it's all about. Hey, today I want to talk to you really quickly from Jeremiah, the 32nd chapter. You got your Bible, go ahead and pull it out and let's take a look at Jeremiah 32, verse 27, 32 and 27. And I almost didn't do one of these this morning because like I told you, I am on the side of very tired. I am. <laughs> and I was like, man, I'm just going to do my video for my youth, which I did this morning. And I said, you know, these grown folks, they're going to be all right. They should have came to church yesterday if they did. <laughs> They got daily devotions they can read this morning. They're going to be okay. And uh, God just laid it on my heart to share this word that he uh, had placed in my spirit just as a word of encouragement. And I know it's going to do exactly that. Jeremiah 32 and 37. Are you guys ready? I'm going to read the NIV translation. You just take a look at whatever translation rocks your world, but I'm going to use the NIV today. Here's what it says. I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. And then it asks us a question. Is there anything too hard for me? Now, this is God talking to us. And he says, is there anything too hard for me? And I want to just label this time of communication a magnet for miracles. A magnet for miracles. You know, I'm reminded of Proverbs 23 and 7. And it says this, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Familiar passage. We quote this a lot. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. And I need you to understand something. That our thoughts, brothers and sisters, please hear me. Our thoughts reflect who we are. And I can't rush through that because you need to really latch on to that today. Our thoughts reflect who we are. Let's make it personal. Your thoughts reflect who you are. Now we can say anything, 
but it's your thoughts that really reveal your relationship with God. It reveals the intentions that you have toward obeying God. Your thoughts really reveal the truth about who you are. And the things we do in this life is really because of the thoughts that we think in this life. And it even goes a little deeper because what we expect and what we experience externally in this life, guess what, guys? It is based on what we think inside our mind. Now, I'm about to give you a piece of revelation that requires a drum roll. Drum roll, please. Brrr. Miracles are a mindset. Okay, I don't want to rush through that because somebody's got to catch that. I teach game-changing principles. I just dropped one in your life. Miracles are a mindset. One more time because you got to get this. Miracles are what? Miracles are a mindset. And you know this is the truth because this is why in Scripture you see Jesus telling those individuals that he ran across who were in need of a healing or in need of deliverance or in need of a blessing, in need of a miracle. You hear Jesus over and over and over again telling these people that they need only to believe. Now, belief is faith in action. Belief is actually obedience in action because if I truly believe in what God is telling me, if I truly believe in what God has promised, heaven, come on, or hell, riches, or poverty, sickness, or death, God has given us these choices and he says, choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. Well, your choices really do clearly reflect what you believe. I construct my life in such a way and I live my life in such a way because I believe that there is a reward for living this way. And I'm not talking about material possessions. I'm not talking about anything on this planet. I'm talking about an eternal reward that I value tremendously because eternity is too long to get eternity wrong. And so many people are living this world for the weekend. They're living for some party. They're living for some getaway. They're living for some escapade, not realizing that all of these little things that you are living for today, are not going to matter in eternity because eternity is much, much, much longer than anything we know about because eternity is forever and you don't want to get eternity wrong. Well, the only way not to get eternity wrong is to believe in the word of God now. And, and I'm not talking about believing in some philosophical way. I'm talking about believing in such a way that your life goes into alignment with what you believe. I believe in the word of God. I believe that God is true. I believe in the promises of God. I also believe in the consequences of disobedience, especially once I know the truth. So what you believe is going to determine how you behave. And you need to understand that God's desire, he literally wants miracles to freely flow through you. I know you may believe the miracles are some, some hard task and you got to work hard for a miracle or you got to jump through some hoops for a miracle. That's not the will of God. The will of God is for miracles to flow freely through every believer. Why is that the will of God, Pastor Troy? Because it's the will of God for miracles to flow freely through every believer because that is the greatest way for the world to be assured that God is alive, that God exists, that God is a game changer, that God is a difference maker. It's because they see this God that we worship and talk about and sing about. They see the benefits of his presence. They see the benefits of our belief in real time, right before their eyes. We have a saying in this world, the proof is in the pudding. I like to say it this way. The proof is supposed to be in the believers. Mm, good God Almighty. You may be the only, the only Bible that some people see. You may be the only church that some people encounter. And if you aren't up to par, if your life is not reflective of what the promises of God say that our lives should be reflective of, then you're bad advertisement for the kingdom and you need to get it together.
You need to get your thoughts together. You need to get your mind together. You need to get your discipline together. You need to get your heart together. You need to get your track record more consistent so that when you step out into this world, when you open your mouth, whether it's talking about kingdom or whether it's talking about business, it will be undeniable that you are a child of God who is living, talking, and walking in right standing with the Almighty One himself. This is how the miracles begin to flow freely in your life. Because let me tell you something, when there is a perfect alignment, flow becomes easy. Oh, teach Pastor Troy. Let me say that again. When there is a perfect alignment, flow becomes easy. I think about a water hose. Back in the day uh, when we were young, during the summertime, my mama would make us go outside and play. And it didn't matter if it was 2,000 degrees outside. We still had to go outside <laughs> and play. And she would say, go outside and play. And don't you come back in till I call you. Mm, okay. And we literally went outside and had to make up games and had to be creative because we had to be out there. We had to be out there until mama called us in. And I remember times during the summer, man, we, were, we got hot. We got thirsty. And we would knock on the screen door and say, hey, mama, can we come in? We're thirsty. And she said, no. Nope, stay out there until I call you in. Matter of fact, drink some water from the water hose. We'd go and turn the water on from the, from the water hose, and nine times out of ten, the water hose was never laid out straight. Because when you get done with the water hose, what do you do? You wrap it up, you throw it up against the house. Well, that water hose could be crinkled, it could be wound up, and you could turn the water on, and you would wait and wait and wait for the water to come. It seemed like it just took forever. And even when it started to flow out, it didn't flow fast. It didn't flow freely. It wasn't until we took the water hose and stretched it out. I'm preaching on a Monday. You better catch this. Took the water hose and stretched it out that the flow began to be more freely. Some of you got too many kinks in your life. Preach Pastor Troy Wynn Sr. Some of you got too many kinks in your spirit. You got too many kinks in your mind. You got too many kinks and curls in your thoughts, and you wonder why there's no flow when it comes to the promises of God. There's not a lot of flow when it comes to the miracles or the manifestations of God. It's because the flow can't flow freely because you got too many loops. Okay, what are you talking about, Pastor Troy? I'm glad you asked. You got too many excuses. Mm, preach, young man. You got too many reasons why you don't do what God told you to do. You got too many, too many, you know, stories as to, you know, why you just don't follow the, inst the instructions of God and the scriptures of God. And all of those just represent kinks and curls and, and different entanglements of your, your flow that could be freely in your life. You've got to unravel that thing. You've got to straighten it out. How do you straighten it out? Well, first of all, you get your thoughts straight. The Bible tells us what to think. Think on these things. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are godly. You got to get your thoughts straight. When you get your thoughts straight, you'll get your walk straight. Ah, preach, Pastor Troy Wynn Sr. Somebody better share that. When you get your thoughts straight, you'll get your walk straight. And when you get your thoughts straight and your walk straight, guess what? That flow begins to flow freely and miracles will flow freely in your life. Well, Pastor Troy, how do I get to that place where I get my thoughts straight and I get my walk straight? How do I get to that place, Pastor Troy, where miracles flow freely in my life? I'm so glad you asked. When we spin significant time in the presence of God. We can better experience God's thoughts. We can better experience God's peace and we can better experience God's leading. When? When we spend significant time in the presence of God. And now we live in a world where folks got time for everything but the presence of God. It's a struggle for folks to go to church sometime. It's a struggle for people to go to Bible study, but it's no struggle for you to go down to the club. It's no struggle for you to get to the liquor store on Friday when you ain't got your paycheck. It's no struggle for you to do the things that you want to do. And all of that is just a reflection of a heart that is not properly connected to God. It's a heart that's got so many entanglements and so many crooks and so many bends that your flow is not what it should be or could be. Why? Because you're not spending that quality time with God. You may not even have a desire to spend the quality time with God. And let's let me let me pause here. That little five minute daily devotion that you read in the morning ain't gonna cut it, bro. That little five minute daily devotion that you read in the morning ain't gonna cut it, sis. You got a whole day you got to get through. 
bump that. You got a whole life you got to get through until your time is up on this planet. And you think five minutes in the morning is just going to change the trajectory of your life. You think five minutes in the morning is going to fix your finances, fix your relationship, help your children be better. No, no, no. I'm just going to keep it real with you. It takes quality presence of God in your life, quality time, quality investment. This is why I've been teaching this year to our congregation. When you come to church, you got to understand that's a sacred moment. When you come to church, you don't you don't need to come to church talking about, okay, I, I got 20 minutes and then I got to go to the game. I got to go, you know, and get my hair done. I got to be the first one at the buffet. Your mind is jacked up. Your mind is not straight. Your thoughts are not pure. There is no alignment. You got a lot of hooks and crooks and entanglements in your thought process. When I go to church, I'm at church. And when I'm at church, I'm saying, God, I'm here to give you everything I got. I'm going to leave it all on the floor. I'm going to leave here tired because I'm going to praise you like it's my last day. If I'm preaching and teaching, I'm going to leave here, God, at having given the people everything you gave me. If you're there and you are a member of the congregation, you should say, God, when I leave here, I'm going to leave here full. When I leave here, God, I'm going to leave here focused. When I leave here, God, I'm going to leave here excited. I'm going to leave here like a sponge that soaked up everything that I could get while I was in your presence. And this is a game changing difference that really starts in your mindset. I want to see you blessed. I want to see you prosperous. I want to see you successful. But you're going to have to do more and pray for it. Preach Pastor Troy Wynn Sr. You're going to have to do more and read that little daily devotion. Uh-uh, uh-uh. You're going to have to really, really, really take some time to get your mind in alignment with God. And then you're going to have to maintain that frequency that lines up with God. See, if you're faithful in following God's word, let me tell you what I know. If you're faithful in following God's way, if you're faithful in following God's will, here's what I want to tell you today, and hopefully it lights a fire up under you. God will always be leading you to a blessing. He'll always be leading you to a breakthrough, or he'll always be leading you to a better place. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Why? Because that's God's nature to lead us from wherever we are to somewhere greater. The Bible says that he takes us from glory to glory, to glory. Well, what that simply means is he takes us from wherever we are to something better, something bigger. He takes us to the blessing, to the breakthrough, to the better place. If we are following him faithfully, and that's the catch. We sometimes follow him conveniently. We sometimes follow him sporadically. We sometimes follow him when it's convenient. And I am telling you, in 2022 going forward, you can't have something different if you keep doing the same thing you've been doing. And why would you keep doing the same thing you've been doing if it has gotten you results that you really don't care to have? I'm encouraging you today to do one of the toughest things you may do this week. Take a long, honest look at where you are. Take a long, honest look at where you are and ask yourself this question. Did God lead me here? Woo, Pastor Troy, I'm preaching to somebody today. Ask yourself this honest question. Did God lead me here? I'm getting ready to close, guys, but I want to bless you as I get ready to exit. Ask yourself, did God lead me here? Did God lead me into this mess? <laughs> am I where I am because God led me here? Or am I? where I am because I haven't been following God faithfully? Am I where I am because I haven't followed God's word? I haven't followed God's will. I haven't followed God's way, not faithfully. I haven't obeyed him consistently. And I am where I am because my mind has not been consistently in alignment with the heart of God. Brothers and sisters, boys and girls, cats, dogs, and squirrels, hear me when I tell you this. It's time to get your mind right. And it's not just time to get our minds right because we, we're notorious about getting our minds right. But once you get your mind right, you got to keep your mind stayed on him. And that's really what we should be doing every single day checking and recalibrating and locking in our minds. The Bible says that we are to renew our minds daily. And I'm going to say this and I'm going to close. You can pray all you want. 
but miracles are a mindset. And if you're sitting there in dire need of a miracle, ain't no need to call in me. Ain't no need to call in some prophet. Ain't no need to try to get somebody to read your palm. Ain't no need of you hoping and wishing and praying. Honey child, brothers, sisters, girls, boys, you got to get your mind right. You got to look at your life and recognize that if you keep on doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep getting the results that you have been getting. Here's the crazy part. In spite of all that you haven't done, God has been blessing you. God's been blessing you. But what he's blessing you with is just enough. Barely enough. Because he reigns on the just as well as the unjust. And I know why God does that. Because God wants you to get sick and tired of yourself. God wants you to get sick and tired of your mediocrity. God wants you to get sick and tired of your marginal living and your marginal relationship with him. He wants you to get fed up with it. And he wants you to get a hunger and a thirst to go all in with him in a way that you've never gone all in with him before. You can pray all you want. God sees your needs. But you need something more than a financial blessing. You need something more than a mate in life. You need something more than a better job. You need something more than a car or a better car or a house or a better house. No, you need <laughs> to get your mind right. And when your mind is right, God said he will withhold no good thing from you. And here's what I want to tell you. If you find that something good is being withheld from you, you find that something good is, is just really hard to, for you to get your hands on and keep and maintain, then obviously there is room in your relationship with the giver of gifts. That if you would just fix that, if you would just fix it finally, once and for all, that you would see God lean in your direction in such a way <laughs> that you'll never be the same again. I want to pray for you today. I want to encourage you today to get your mind right. Because Jeremiah 32 and 27, God says, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is there anything too hard for me? Who wouldn't ride for a God where there's nothing too hard for him? Who wouldn't sell out to a God where he can do everything that you are imagining and asking him to do? That he is actually the ticket. He is the key to everything. But sometimes we want a little bit of God and we want a little bit of all of these other things, hoping that the combination will get us to the desired destination. God is more than enough. Can I get somebody to say that? God is more than enough. And God wants to make you a magnet for miracles. Let's pray today. Father God, we say thank you for this word that you've given us. Thank you for this time of focus this morning. And for those that will see this later on in the day or maybe in a different time zone, we ask that you would bless them whenever they see it to hear your voice, to hear your voice in this communication and to allow their heart to be pricked by your presence. Father, there are folks out there that love you, but they have not obeyed you. They've loved you, but they've lived a marginal life, a minimal life. They love you, but they have not fully connected with you and fully straightened out the kinks in their thoughts. Uh, they love you, but you're not a priority. They love you, but they've got a whole lot of excuses. And today, Father, I want you just to remind them of how much you love them and how that you're not withholding good from them to punish them, but you are withholding good from them to push them closer towards you. Today, God, we desire to be a magnet for miracles. We desire that the miracles will flow in our lives we desire that you will give us victory 
in those areas where we may have been struggling. And we trust you today to do that. That today will be the day of a great turnaround. That the day will be the day of a new chapter in our relationship and our commitment, our consistency and our faithfulness to you. In the name of your son, we pray today. Amen. Amen. And amen. Wow. I don't know about you, but I truly feel the presence of God right now. Powerful, powerful. I pray that you've been blessed. I pray that you'll share this communication with those that are connected to you so that we can have a ripple effect and just reach out and bless others. And I pray that if God leads you to, that you will sow into the ministry that is the Freedom Church, that you will recognize that what you sow into, you grow into. Bless the things in this life that bless you because they don't have to be, they don't have to exist. And by you sowing into it, you actually become a partner with it and you are entitled to a portion of the blessings that God will pour on that which you have invested in and sown into. Freedom Church has been chosen by God. I have been chosen by God. And I have no problem telling you that the Freedom Church is good ground. And let me tell you this, I am good ground. So consider sowing today, sowing a seed of faith, sowing a seed into something that is producing a harvest in your life. And I want you to have what kind of day? You remember what I told you I was going in with? I want you to have a God day. Not a good day, but a God day. If you do that, God will be pleased. We love you. We're praying for you. Until the next time, get your mind right so you can be a magnet for miracles. God bless you, everybody. Thank you.